What is up everybody? Logan here again with another video today. And today we took another call credit spread. It worked out. We ended up closing it and made a nice little gain on it today. We want to take some time really quickly to say, I do appreciate all the YouTube support as always. We're pushing, trying to get to this 11K subs by the end of the month. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it. It would mean a bunch to me. The videos have just been going nuts and I can't thank you enough. We should do the light bulb emoji today. I don't know why I'm just feeling that one, but if you want to help support the channel for the algorithm, leave a comment about your trades today and then a little light bulb emoji next to it if you want to. So I really appreciate it big time and let's hit this 11K goal and get right into this video. Um, we're going to go over the criteria for this trade today. This now puts us at 70 for 73 in our last 73 zero DTE trades. We'll go over the checklist as always. But i um, super excited to get into this one in general. We sat in the trade a little bit longer than I typically like to. Granted, we were in call credits the last two days. The market marched up both of the days. But due to where we placed ourselves, we didn't have to worry too much about getting tested. And it gave us a good criteria for if we were to roll um, or even potentially stop loss out of the trade. But the premium really didn't rise too much today where we were at. So we'll take a little deep dive into it. I do want to jump over to the Discord real quick, uh, show you guys the trade, but I have been doing one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Bruce said, thanks again for another solid one-on-one. -on -one. I'm learning things I really feel like I need to know, and your style of teaching makes it really easy. So I did want to mention that I do mentorship sessions um, at an hour at a time. If you guys would be interested in learning more or fast-tracking some of your learning, these are the rates if you're in the Discord or not. Uh, and then here's the 70 out of 73 zero DTE sheet. If you guys would like me to make this accessible, you guys can see me plug all the trades in at the end of the trading day. Um, sometimes it's the end of the week, of course, but super excited. And we will take you guys over to the zero DT pumping iron. The link to the discord to come trade with us is below as well. So today we took the 3875, 3880 call credit spread and we filled for 40. Uh, that's the one thing we did put in for 35 at first and didn't get a fill. So I bumped it out, let everybody know, hey, I'm going to work this at 40. And if we get the push up, then we'll get filled. Right. And I decided to place this in between one times the expected move and two times. And this would protect us from a 2% move up. Very similar to yesterday, almost an identical, identical trade from the entry to looking at where are we on the playing field to also find finding premium, you know, that was worth it. Right. And that was one thing that we're going to go over in the zero DT checklist, but first we always start with the expected move math. Right. And that's what I did right out of the gate is when we pushed up to this little like 38, 12 is when I initially put that trade on, got in for 40 and then it immediately shot up to, I think 70 or 75. And the one thing that kept me pretty stable through all of this was knowing if we go back over to the discord, right? The expected move chart for the day that Vance posted zero DT guide for the day, even though the date is wrong, but this was the previous close and our EM was 47 at close, right? So I looked at the EM high and said, okay, where can we find premium? That's close to two times the EM high. Well, 3875, 3880, I was watching that premium move a little bit, and this put, put us right at that 2% up mark, right? Which you have an odds out of the money of 91% of the time. That's okay. So by putting myself up at 2% away, but also knowing that the EM high was 38.44, and we really spent a lot of time around that 38.44, right? All of this time in the morning, we broke above it for a little bit, but not too far. And even at this 3850, right around 1220, I still felt really confident in where we were because the premium wasn't moving very much at that point. So we were maybe down 10 cents most of the day. Now, granted, early in the day, we were down about 30 cents on the trade, up to even 40 cents. I think we got up to 80 at one point. But as the day goes on and the expected move starts to shrink, this gave us a good opportunity around this 2 p.m. time to just get out for 10 cents and move on because then we had two more hours to watch the market. And I think I would have gotten a little bit, uh, a little antsy around this time, of course, around that 345 towards market close where the market could just move up, right? 15, 20 points in that time, even though it wasn't pricing it in, 
right? And as you watch the expected move throughout the day, it kept shrinking. It was down to 19 at one point going into the afternoon. So that was a little bit more beneficial was just knowing, hey, you know, we're probably going to stick close to the expected move, but we exceeded it again and closed again outside of it, just like we did on Friday. So it looks like the market makers are really trying to push this thing out of its range. Now, granted, the S&P is down about a percent after hours because of Google earnings, but that is one thing to keep in mind. And that's why I don't ever put us right at the expected move, because you could get blown through by a little bit. This only moved, what, 10, 15 points above it for the rest of the day. But that's enough for a max loss if you're somebody who is trading credit spreads at those specific levels. So that was one thing that I really wanted to highlight in this one was we sold call credits again. The reason I did that was just because we were up, I think now at this point, like 8% in the last seven trading days. And that is very uncommon, even in a bear market, like I was saying, just because you generally have a solid cool down session before either the selling continues in the bear market or you then get the next leg higher. But it has just been basically straight up for the last seven, eight days with one day of rest. But that was pretty much it. And it wasn't anything too spectacular. So we'll see if the market starts to tumble off these earnings or if it's just a little blip on the radar. Back to the expected move, though. Um, yeah, fantastic credit at one point. If you wanted to, we did get up to about 75 credit, but I just played off the expected move again. You could see the EM was 1.24%. I put us at the 2% mark. And that's the other thing too, is I was just watching that premium. If it started to get about three times what I collected, which would have been a buck 20, um, I would have started to look at closing it. That's part of that risk management, right? Way down here, which we'll get into. But yeah, there's no gap up or gap down. We basically opened right where we closed the day before. And then the VIX, the VIX has stayed pretty steadily. It did drop a little bit more today though, but it has been steady around that 30 mark. The next level is either 25 or we go back, break out off of 30 and then keep running up as the market drops. So position sizing is always the same. I would dive into my TOS charts, but really nothing nothing too crucial for that for today's trade. Six percent of the account as always with the sizing and the timing it could have been better. I could have been a little more patient on the entry um, but I still liked where we were in general as far as the probability getting in with the fills right So I could have waited a little bit longer got better premium but that's the one thing about the market is you really never know exactly what the market's going to do right So you always have to set yourself up well. I went over choosing strikes and why I did that. And that was to put us at 2% move upwards, which is safe about 91% of the time. And that also gave us a good 30 points away from that 1x EM position. So really nice spot I like to be in in those uh, situations, right? So that's running through the checklist. The expected move math stayed strict today again, right? Like where we put ourselves was not tested even though we broke out of the expected move, which already rarely happens. So when it happens, you also have to remember if you're above it or below it and you have really solid risk um, parameters for why you're in the trade and risk management reasons, then you can hold it out, you can let it ride, you can manage when you feel like it's necessary because I could have even rolled it and rolled it up above 3,900 for tomorrow, right? And that would put us right around the expected move for tomorrow. And I can continue to push this up until we get enough time where we get a solid cool off. And then that either expires worthless or I close it for a small debit. Um, just because we're at this extended range now where generally the market tends to cool down, right? So that's what we were talking about in the Discord this morning was just, all right, we're in. Let's ride this out. I was hoping we'd get a little bit more of a pullback, but the market did stay pretty steady, pushing the EM most of the day. But we were able to close that for a 10 cent debit. So opening it for 40, closing it for 10, keeping 30 bucks on that trade, a solid 6%. That is one of my favorite entries, especially credit received. And then, you know, after a few hours of sitting in it, just take it off and we can move on to tomorrow's trade. There was no setup for a put credit again today. Um, really haven't had very many iron condor setups just because this market's been really one-sided. We either go up for a few days in a row 
and then we whipsaw the other way. So it's very difficult to get a really good fill on one side and then get something you're comfortable with on the other side as well. So that's going to be everything for me in this video. I hope it got, I hope it helped you guys out a decent amount. And uh, every time I trade, I'm going to try to make a video, show you guys what I did, see what you guys can do to apply this to your trading strategy. Like I said, if you want to come trade with us in the Discord, um, I do run discounts. If you don't want to pay month to month, you can do three months, six months, 12 months. And uh, I will heavily discount those like 30 to 40% off your rate from month to month to month. So it may make it way more affordable for you to come trade with us. Uh, but that's going to be everything for me in this video. And I will see you guys in the next one.